Hey folks, welcome back. In this video we're going to look at Boyle's Law, also known as the Pressure Volume Law. Now it's worth pointing out that this video follows on from the previous one on the Boyle's Law experiment, so make sure you check that one out if you haven't already done so. So let's get started. From the video on Boyle's Law experiment, we concluded that for a fixed mass of gas at constant temperature, pressure is inversely proportional to volume, and we said that this was Boyle's Law. And remember this just means as volume goes up, pressure goes down, or as volume goes down, pressure goes up. So there we have Boyle's Law in word form, but that's it in symbol form there, P is directly proportional to 1 over V, which also means P is inversely proportional to V, because of this 1 divided by the variable. But what we're now going to do is we're going to see how we can take this Boyle's Law and form an equation from it. So using a mathematical trick, we can introduce a constant. So whenever we have something that looks like this with the directly proportional sign, in order to get rid of that and replace it with an equal sign, we need to multiply everything on the right hand side by a constant. So here, if we do that, we'll get P equals 1 over V times a constant. Or in other words, P equals a constant divided by V, because the constant times the 1 on the numerator of the fraction will just be a constant. So we have P equals a constant over V, or if we want to get the constant on its own on the right hand side, what we can do is cross multiply here to get the volume up to the left hand side. So we end up with P times V equals a constant. And it says this can also be seen numerically from the last column in the table. So remembering back to the video on Boyle's Law Experiment, we said that there were some extra columns in the table that we would refer back to, and this is the last column that we haven't looked at yet. So we are saying that pressure times volume should equal a constant. So if we look back at our table from the Boyle's Law Experiment, you'll see that if I include a column of pressure times volume in my table, the numbers come out roughly constant, ranging from about 1.8 to about 1.9. It's obviously not perfectly constant, because if it was perfectly constant, you would get the exact same number each time, but realistically, in an experiment, this isn't going to happen. But because it's such a small range, we could say that these numbers are roughly constant. So this is somewhat proving to us that when you do pressure times the volume, this gives us a roughly constant number. So what we can now do is say that since pressure times volume is equal to a constant, we can introduce these variables or subscripts 1s and 2s. So let's say we're dealing with a situation where you have an initial pressure and an initial volume of a gas, and you change the volume of the gas and that consequently changes the pressure of the gas. Well, in order to represent the initial and final pressures and volumes, we need to introduce these little 1s and 2s. So because pressure times volume equals a constant, we can make pressure times volume equal to pressure times volume. And we could actually continue this and make this equal to P3V3, equal to P4V4, and so on. But because we're only dealing with initial and final values here, we only need the subscripts 1 and 2. So we have P1V1 equals P2V2 where P1 and P2 are the initial and final pressures measured in pascals, or newtons per square metre, and V1 and V2 are the initial and final volumes measured in metres cubed, centimetres cubed, or litres, depending on what is used in the question. So it could also be millimetres cubed, for example. So this is the equation related to Boyle's Law that you can use to find an unknown variable. Lastly, we're going to look at how to explain Boyle's Law in terms of the kinetic model. So remember, the kinetic model just means particles in a container. So it says here, consider a fixed mass of gas at a constant temperature in a sealed container. Remember, fixed mass of gas just means the same number of particles. So here we're thinking about eight gas particles in our container, and that is staying the same. So it says that when the container is compressed, the volume of the gas decreases, so the particles have less space to move around in. So you can see that from the picture here, if we decrease the volume of the container, you'll see that the particles now have less space to move around in. It then says that this causes them to collide with the walls of the container more often. So because the particles have a shorter distance to travel to hit off each other and off the walls of the container, they're going to hit off the walls of the container more often. And therefore, they exert more force per unit area. And remember, a force per unit area is the definition of pressure. So this means that the pressure of the gas increases. So what we've done is we've explained why, if you decrease the volume of your gas, the pressure will increase. And lastly, it says to note that the gas molecules move at the same speed since the temperature is constant. So if we're not changing temperature, the speed of the particles won't change since their kinetic energy is staying the same. Just to show you a quick simulation to help you visualise this, you can see here that we've got particles in our sealed container, and you'll notice that I'm holding temperature constant so that we can look at the relationship between pressure and volume. So you'll see the pressure is varying roughly from about 15 to 16 atmospheres on the pressure gauge, but if I was to decrease the volume of my container, then you'll notice that the pressure jumps up to about 27 atmospheres. If I then decrease it even further, it jumps up to about 30 or 31 atmospheres. 
If I increase the volume of my container, however, you'll notice the pressure jumps back down and decreases. If I increase the volume even further, you'll notice the pressure decreases even further. So we're saying that if we decrease the volume of the container, the particles have less space to move around in, so they're going to hit off the walls of the container more frequently, and therefore exert more force per unit area, and therefore an increased pressure. But if we increase the volume of our container, then you'll notice that the particles have more room and more space to move around in, so they're going to collide off the walls of the container less frequently or less often, and therefore exert less force per unit area on the walls of the container, and therefore there will be a smaller pressure. That's all for this video folks, thanks for watching. If you made it to the end, I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video one of these, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Thank you.